Breaking news, Trump subpoenaed to testify before this January 6th committee. And this is at CNN Politics. This is a story by Annie Grayer, Zachary Cohen, and Sarah Murray. Came out today. So today the committee subpoenas Trump. It's somewhat of a lengthy article, so I'm just going to read part of this to you and point out the flaws in the subpoena that was issued. So talking about the subpoena in this article, it says, As demonstrated in our hearings, we have assembled overwhelming evidence, including from dozens of your former appointees and staff, that you personally orchestrated and oversaw a multi-part effort to overturn the 2020 presidential election and to obstruct the peaceful transfer of power. Well, first of all, a subpoena is not supposed to make any type of accusations. It's supposed to be a neutral document. All a subpoena is supposed to do is compel somebody to appear in court and produce whatever documents they request, the court requests. But this committee is not a court of law. That's the uh, number one flaw in this argument here. This committee is not a court of law. Secondly, you have to show exactly what this evidence is. And you can't make these accusations that uh, Trump personally orchestrated, oversaw a multi-part effort to overturn the 2020 election. That gets proven in court. Where's the evidence of this? They have no evidence. They have nothing. So, of course, this committee is comprised of, uh, headed up by Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Kinzinger, how do you say his last name? And Bernie Thompson. Now, the panel summarizes what it presented in its hearings to demonstrate why it believes Trump personally orchestrated and oversaw the efforts to overturn the election. It says that Trump personally and maliciously disseminated false claims that the 2020 election was stolen in order to help his plan to overturn the election and to solicit contributions. Okay, you have to show, again, with evidence, beyond a shadow of doubt that Trump purposely and maliciously disseminated false claims that the 2020 election was stolen in order for him to overturn the election. And you have to prove that he had a plan to overturn the election. Nothing's here. Nothing's here that can show that Trump was engaging in malicious behavior to overturn the 2020 election. The committee paints Trump as orchestrating and overseeing the effort to obtain false state electors. That has to be proven again. On pressure campaigns, uh, Trump enacted the panel highlighted said Trump attempted to corrupt the Department of Justice. How did he corrupt the Department of Justice? By getting officials to make false statements. Did he force these officials to make false statements? Illegally pressured state officials to change election results. No, CNN, no, January 6th committee. Because any candidate who runs for office has a right under the Constitution to protest the results of that election. So they're claiming in the subpoena, again, which is supposed to be neutral, and just ask this person to appear in court with whatever documents they request. In fact, I'm going to go here to Cornell Law. Really great website if you haven't seen this. It's the Legal Information Institute. So it says, Rule 17, a subpoena. A subpoena must state the court's name and title of the proceeding, include the seal of the court, and command the witness to attend and testify at the time and place the subpoena specifies. The clerk must issue a blank subpoena, signed and sealed to the party requesting it, and that party must fill in the blanks before the subpoena is served. In general, a subpoena may order the witness to produce any books, papers, documents, data, Other objects the subpoena designates. 
The court may direct the witness to produce the designated items in court before trial or before they are to be offered in evidence. When the items arrive, the court may permit the parties and their attorneys to inspect all or part of them. So that's all subpoena does is it compels somebody to appear in court. It's not supposed to make all these accusations. It can say that we need this evidence or you to produce these documents in relation to whatever the charge is. But it can't be uh, doing what they're doing here and saying that in the subpoena that Trump purposely and maliciously did this out or the other. Again, you have to have evidence to back it up. And this January 6th committee is not a court of law. It's not a kangaroo court. Now, Trump and his legal team have been discussing how to respond to the subpoena. A source familiar with the situation told CNN. Stressing that no firm decisions have been made. Trump, you got to testify. Do it. And I would play hardball. If I were Trump, I'd play hardball. I'd say, yeah, I'll testify under one condition that the hearing is made public. And if you're not going to make this hearing public, then screw you. We're going to do this on my terms now. You are not a court of law. And we cannot have a kangaroo court. What is this going to uh, say to the American people when they see their government engaged in this type of activity? Where they're going after an individual over an election that happened two years ago. There's nothing here. This is going to backfire on the day. I'm an independent voter. I said that before. And I'm not making that up. Yes, I like Trump's enthusiasm. I thought he would have been the better candidate than Biden, but I didn't vote for Trump. So Trump and his legal team have been discussing or are discussing how to respond to the subpoena, according to the source that talked with CNN. Stressing that no firm decisions have been made, and Trump has tapped the lawyers Harmit Dillon and Jim Trusty to make the lead on responding to the subpoena. Now, the former president posted a lengthy response criticizing the Committee on Truth Social after members voted unanimously to subpoena him, but did not say whether he would comply. Trump also recently shared a Fox story on Truth Social that claimed he loves the idea of testifying. Trump's got to do it. He's just got to do it. And turn the tables on him. Trump, when you testify, turn the tables on him. I would. And here's what I would do. If I were in this hearing and I were Trump, I would say, okay, you're saying all these accusations against me. I want you to produce the evidence right now. Show me the evidence. If you're asking me all these questions, I want you to show me the evidence right now. Put it out on the table. Let the American people see it. Even though I author, even though I requested this authorization for additional security, which he did, and Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of D.C. turned it down. What does that tell you, folks? When you've got Nancy Pelosi and you've got the mayor of D.C. turning down additional security. National Guard troops. Sounds to me like this was a setup to get Trump from the get-go. Which is exactly what it is. Nobody wants to admit to it, but that's exactly what it is. A two-year-old can figure that out. Now, in the subpoena, the committee specifically demands Trump turn over any communication sent or received during the period of November 3rd, 2020 to January 2021, with more than a dozen of his close allies who have emerged as key players in the broader plan to overturn the 2020 election. Now, these allies include Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, Steve Bannon, Rudy Giuliani, Jeffrey Clark. You have Boris Epstein, Clayton Mitchell, Patrick Byrne. This subpoena calls for testimony regarding your dealings with multiple individuals who have now themselves invoked their Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination regarding their communications with you, which is their right to do, including Roger Stone, Michael Flynn, John Eastman, Jeffrey Clark, Kelly Ward. It is our obligation to seek Donald Trump's testimony, Thompson said, ahead of the subpoena vote during the hearing. Now, Liz Cheney said during the hearing that seeking Trump's testimony under oath remains a key task because several witnesses, the closest to the former president, doing this in one take again, invoked their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in response to their interactions with Trump. 
We are obligated to seek answers directly from the man who set this all in motion. How do you know Trump th uh, set this all in motion, Liz Cheney? How do you know there weren't people in the crowd infiltrating the crowd to disrupt things uh, with this election? Yes, you had people there that weren't happy with the results of the election. We all know that. But this doesn't make sense to me. Trump supporters who have always backed the police, who believe in law and order, would start engaging in unlawful behavior over an election. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I talked about this in a video way back, this idea of pattern theory. You study patterns, and if there's any change in that pattern, uh, that's going to change the outcome. Could it be possible that we had some people that posed as Trump supporters? That were breaking uh, the windows at the Capitol? And I go back to this again. Trump never once told his supporters, never once told his supporters, to raid the Capitol building. They said, we are going to peacefully and patriarchally march to the Capitol to make our voices heard. Oh, but they conveniently edited that clip out when they showed all these clips of this supposedly new evidence during this hearing. You people in this January 6th hearing are full of crap. Everybody knows it. It's just like that toilet in San Francisco. Did you hear about this? San Francisco has just spent $1.7 million on building a public toilet that's not going to be open until 2025. That toilet better have a gold seat on it. Go check that story out. And they want to say that Trump is corrupt. Yeah, Trump's corrupt and he orchestrated all the... One man orchestrates all this, right? You got. I'll tell you why people are pleading the fifth. Because these people around Trump, they're cowards. They want to be part of D.C. Let's be honest here. They want to be part of D.C. Got to be inv invited to that next steak and shrimp dinner. It's so stu this this whole idea of C uh, DC is so stupid in my opinion. It re it really is. I mean, is DC that great of a town that you're chomping at the bit to go to the next steak and shrimp dinner, which most of the time is coming off of the backs of us, the taxpayer? These people. I think these people in high school really were the rejects, okay, and then they went into politics or journalism. There's an old saying when I worked in radio, you have a face for radio. Same thing here. These people in D.C., they're ugly, they're frustrated, they screwed up their lives. This is the only thing they know how to do. And they just can't get away from D.C. They gotta be there. They're... What is it about D.C. that's so damn special? That's what I like to know. Well, I'm happy in my little sleepy hamlet, okay? So I thought I'd come here and talk about this. This is at CNN Politics, breaking news of the day, that Trump has been subpoenaed by this January 6th committee, and he needs to testify. And like I said, play hardball. Trump, tell me I'll testify as long as it's a public hearing. As long as it's a public hearing. Turn the tables on him and see what happens. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Again, a one-take video. Sorry that my phone beeped there a moment ago. Our Wi-Fi is going in and out today. But you can follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes. Find me at Twitter, Cultural Confederacy at Twitter. This is the Cultural Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this thing we call the United States. And you all have a great weekend.